Hi, my name is Alyssa O'Connor. And I'm Drew Ramsey. And we are reporting on the 2020 study done on the topic, Homodimerization of a Glycoside Hydrolase Family, GH1 beta-glucosidase, suggests distinct activity of enzyme different states. This study was conducted by researchers Otsuka, Chagas, Almeida, and Marana. The abstract states that in this work, activity and oligomeric states were investigated in relation to a purified GH1 beta glucosidase from Spodoptera frugopyrida. Basic tests were run to determine the kinetic parameters of the enzyme in monomeric and dimeric form. It was found that the oligomeric states exhibit different catalytic efficiencies. This study focuses on a specific enzyme that is found in the fall armyworm called Spodoptera frugopyrida. This insect is known to be a devastating pest when it's found in fields of maize crop. This enzyme is a GH1 beta-glucosidase that we abbreviate as SF beta gli. This nomenclature stems first from the insect where it's found, and the latter half of this nomenclature comes from the enzyme family that this is a part of, and that is called beta-glycosidases. The main point of this research emphasizes the difference in enzymatic activity found between the two oligomeric states of SF beta gly, and that is the dimer and the monomer state. Oligomeric enzymes are those that consist of two or more subunits, um, and in our case, we find that the two states act differently when it comes to terms of its catalytic efficiency. The hypothesis suggested by this research suggests that SF beta gly monomers allow different conformational substates when occurring within the dimeric state or in isolation as the monomer. In other words, the way that monomers join together when forming the dimer may differ slightly between subunits, which may cause a change in its catalytic efficiency. The first goal of this paper was to characterize the homodimerization of the enzyme. And they achieved this by using a size exclusion chromatography. As you can see in figure one, this big peak right here represents the dimer, while the small peak represents the monomer. Um, and the weight for both, uh, the weight for the monomer was 65.5 kilodaltons, while the weight of the dimer equaled 112.3 kilodaltons. It's also important to mention that they ran it through a crystal, crystallographic structure uh, of the dimer, and it was shown that the path is not hindered when, it, when the monomers come together, so the substrate can still reach it. Our enzyme was also run through size exclusion chromatography under different concentrations to see what effect the uh, concentration would have upon the dimerization process. So in figure 2a, you can see here that as concentration was increased, the concentration of the dimeric form was also increased with it. And then also in figure 2b is showing uh, the plot of the fractional dimer over the concentration of the R enzyme, enzyme and they used this to calculate the KD, which was 3.7 micromolars. Their objective was to compare the dimer and the monomer, uh, their different enzyme parameters. And to do this, they calculated the KM values, the KCAT values, and the KCAT over KM values. And from these, they were able to calculate that the monomer is 2.5 fold lower in catalytic efficiency. Finally, uh, they wanted to find the kinetics and thermodynamics uh, of the homodimerization process. Uh, and they did this by use of intrinsic fluorescence. So this can be seen in figure 3A. Um, they uh, used absorbance of 337 nanometers, um, and they raised the concentration of the enzyme. As you can see, as, they, as the concentration is increased and more of the monomer is being turned into the dimer, there's more fluorescence being seen. But also, as dimers are increased, um, it goes back down, and this is uh, due to a quenching factor where there's so much uh, of the dimer that the light is not really getting through. Um, so uh, figure 3B is just another representation of uh, the dimer and the monomer and how the dimer is more fluorescent.
Note that the differences in fluorescence uh, are known between the dimer and the monomer. They were able to run them through a fast dilution assay under different temperatures. 4A shows it uh, under 20 degrees Celsius, while 4B shows it under 5 degrees Celsius. And from this, they were able to calculate the monomerization constant, which for uh, under 20 degrees Celsius was 277.10 inverse seconds. And for 5 degrees Celsius, it was 61.10 uh, inverse seconds. And they were also able to calculate the kinetic binding constant, which was 16.5 inverse moles inverse seconds. To further explore the differences in kinetics between the monomer and the dimer, they performed a perturbation experiment at different temperatures, which can be seen in figure 5a and 5b. From this, uh, they were able to calculate the activation energy, the entropy, and the enthalpy. Um, as seen in our poster, uh, the activation energy was 18.5 kilocal mole inverse seconds. The enthalpy to be 17.9 kilocal mole inverse second. And the entropy to be negative 0.034 kilocal mole inverse second. To test the different state's efficiency levels, a variety of materials and methods were used. SDS page was used for gel filtration to separate the enzyme into its subunits, which were placed into buffered solutions to test their enzymatic activity at different pH values. Um, likely this is due to the fact that enzymes often have very specific pH values where they have optimal activity. The SF beta gly enzymes were expressed from a vector and then those cells were broken down through sonification, which is a process where sound waves are added to those cells in a high frequency, and this is meant to agitate those cells and break them open. Um, once they were lysed, they were washed with a binding buffer, and those that remained bound were eluded through a high trap desalting column and were later purified through SDS page. This enzymatic reaction was catalyzed for observation by transfer of the SF beta gli samples from an icy environment into a 30 degrees Celsius warmer environment. Um, from this test, results were used to determine the kinetic parameters for enzymatic activity, which will be analyzed in our results section. And lastly, size exclusion chromatography was paired with a fluorescence detector, and it was analyzed at wavelengths 280 and 295 nanometers, respectively. Um, the 295 nanometers was the excitation wavelength at which a photon was absorbed and electrons were excited into a higher energy level or a higher orbital. Um, and then at 337 nanometers, the emission wavelength was observed as the photon was emitted and electrons descended back down into their original ground state. So oligomerization or joining of monomers is typically done um, through a process called self-association in which a monomer will join with another monomer that it's like itself, um, forming a dimer or in this case a homodimer. The homodimer in this experiment exhibits a surface area of 906 angstroms, 30 residues, and four hydrogen bonds. Also, it was suggested that the dimer state exhibits enabling loops in its surface that favor interaction and this enabling loop is suggested to be spanning the positions proline 287 all the way to phenylalanine position 311. So figure six shows the conformational selectivity of the SF beta gly monomers. Um, the red monomer shown here is the more lowly active conformational state and the blue monomer shown here is the highly active conformational state. Um, the blue monomer is made through a conformational change undergone by the red monomer to one, get into a substate that's favorable for conformational selectivity, and two, to bind to another monomer that is similar to itself in order to achieve this lower energy state of the homodimer, which we find is highest in catalytic efficiency. So in conclusion, the homodimer of SF beta gly was found to be two and a half times more active than the monomeric state. 
Each dimer exhibits symmetry due to the conformational selection where the two monomers that were alike join together to form that homodimer, and this results in the most stable and catalytically efficient product.